Hi guys, I'm Woodcraft Hamster and I wanted to have a little talk today about Woodcraft and Bushcraft axes. Um, now I have uh, four or five different axes that I use regularly, some more so than others, um, but I just wanted to sort of run through um, what axes I've got, um, in particular the styles more so than the makes and the brands, um, and what I use each one for and which I find works better for certain tasks. Um, now I just want to say right at the very beginning of this video, um, I favour Grants Falls Brooks axes. Um, it's the ones that I've used for, for quite some time now and, and personally they're, they're my personal preference. Um, this is not a promo video for Grants Falls axes, I'm not suggesting that you have to go out and buy one, um, it's just the ones that I have uh, found work best for me. Um, but what you'll find is out, out of the four axes I've got here in front of me, three of them are, are Grants Falls um, and they're just the ones that I've, um, I've personally chosen. Um, so, what I wanted to show you first of all is the different types of axes that I use. Um, now, the first one here um, is a um, Grand Source Brooks Small Forest Axe. Um, there are several other manufacturers around that make a very similar shape, size and style axe. Um, and what I'll do, I'll drop the, um, the details up on the screen there just so you know the, the, the correct size and weight and everything. Um, but the thing to remember with pretty much any axe um, is you want to find something that A is comfortable for you so obviously the handle, the material, um, the, the way that it's been shaped so that it fits nicely in your hand so you're not going to get blisters uh, is obviously very important um, as is an axe mask. So as you can see this, this is the standard axe mask that this comes with. It's got a nice little um, popper on there to keep it secure and what it does, it just sits over the blade of the axe um, and keeps you protected and the, and the blade protected as well. Um, and you pop it back on, it slips round, the popper goes on and that's not going anywhere. That's not going to come off in, inside your pack. Um, if you can get um, axe loops for your belts, that it will sit kind of like this as you're walking around and it just keeps both you and the axe protected. Um, if you do end up buying an axe that doesn't have a mask, um, I would certainly recommend making one or, or if not purchasing one if, if it's not a, a skill that you feel you can do properly. Um, and you know, that's just mainly from the safety side of things, you need to have something that's covering the sharp blade. And, and the, you know, the flip side of that is that you need to make sure that your axe is sharp. Um, similarly to, uh, to knives, you know, a blunt tool is a much more dangerous tool than a sharp tool provided it's used properly. Um, so as I say, this is my, the, the, the largest axe that I own. Um, I, I don't have a requirement or a need for a, a, a large felling axe that would probably come up somewhere like here. Um, you know, uh, you know I, I could go out and buy one um, and you know, add it to, to, to my collection, so to speak. However, I've, I've got no real need for it, um, so, I, so I don't own anything bigger than this. Um, now this is a nice axe. Um, the head is a, a good size for splitting. Uh, you can chop down a small tree with this if you need to um, and because of the way the uh, the head of the axe has got a, uh, a bit of a, an angle on it here you can actually get your hand right up and choke right up to the top of the axe and you can use it for fine work you can carve with this if needs be now the length of this handle does mean that it gets in the way a little bit if you try and do some carving um, but it's not impossible to do um, and this is a good all-round camp task style of axe. Um, I don't use this as often as the rest of them, um, and I'll move on to that shortly, um, but it's, it's, it's a good all-round um, camp and bushcraft axe. Uh, the next axe I have, again, Grand Falls Brooks, um, and this is their carving axe. Um, and this is probably the one I use most at the moment. Um, so again, you can look. You can see the uh, the handle there. It's slightly uh, different design. You've got a couple of curves on it, um, which gives you a few different options to hold it. Um, the blade itself is again a very different style. Um, it's a much wider blade. Um, you've got a sweep up here, so you can obviously get in to do some fine detail. Again, you can choke right up to the head of the axe, so you can. Uh, if I grab a piece of wood here. So you can choke right up and you can, you can cut off shavings with this. Um, you know, you can get really, really fine, really, really detailed cuts with this if you need to. Um, and this is, this is my preferred axe for wood carving. Um, you can make spoons, you can make bowls. Any, anything that I'm doing carving wise, I tend to use this axe. Um, now what you can do, um, you, you can split wood with this. You could chop down a tree with this. 
Um, I don't use it for those purposes because for me it's, it's, it's committed as a, as solely as a carving axe. Um, but if you were to own only one, this would be a, a general or good all-rounder focused slightly more so on carving. Um, and as, as with the other one, there are several manufacturers that make axes of a similar um, type and style to this um, that is designed more so for carving. Uh, and again, you've got a nice leather axe mask on this as well, just to keep it safe um, and to keep me safe as well. The third axe I've got, um, once again, is a Grand's Force Brux. Now, this is their mini hatchet. Um, now, this is probably my favourite axe. Um, and a lot of people have looked at this and, and, and commented when I've made, made that remark. Um, well, it's so small, what can you possibly do with an axe like this? Um, and if I just take off the axe mask there. So you've got a reasonable sized head here. Again, you can choke right up on it. Um, and again, if I take that piece of wood, so you can carve with this, um, you can chop with it, you can split wood with this, um, and you can do pretty much everything that you need to do with the larger axe, barring taking a, a swing at a tree with it. I mean, you could do it one-handed, and you can sit there and you can hack away if you, if you, so, if you uh, wanted to. Um, but for the size and the space and the weight this takes up, um, for me, this is certainly my most versatile axe, um, and I would wholeheartedly recommend not only this particular axe and you know this maker and model, um, but any axe of this type and size. Um, I think is a, is a really really good tool for anybody, especially if you're looking to save weight, space, uh, etc. Um, now this will actually fit in a, a, a good sized coat pocket. Um, it will go in. Um, Things like the uh, the snug pack um, response packet will fit inside there. Um, I've also got a Maxpedition, um, can't remember the name of it for the life of me, but a Maxpedition sort of shoulder bag, um, and it will fit in there as well. Uh, the Jumbo Versa pack, that was the name. It will fit in there as well. Um, you know, you can get a little belt loop, stick it on your belt, and if you've got a long enough jacket, you can cover it over that as well. Um, but this, personally, I think is a really, really good axe. Um, what I've also thought I'd show you is this, which is a splitting wedge. Um, now again, it's not something I often carry into the woods with me unless my purpose is to go out and collect some timber for, for woodworking, bringing home and doing woodworking later on. Um, but in combination with an axe, um, I find a decent splitting wedge is very, very useful. Um, you can also make splitting wedges while you're out in the field and often that's what I do instead of taking this with me. Um, if you're trying to split a particularly large log, um, you know, you can do it with axe, by all means you can. Um, however, you know, something like this or making your own wedges do make that process go a lot faster and, and you can be a lot more accurate. Um, and the last axe I wanted to show you was this. Um, now this is a cold steel trail hawk. Um, it's a tomahawk design and it is a good axe, don't get me wrong. Uh, but it's not what I would necessarily take in the field with me. Um, now this is designed uh, for several things, one of which is throwing, um, and I do use this on occasion to throw, um, and it's, uh, you know, if nothing, it's just a good fun pastime. Um, I wouldn't throw any of these axes, it's not what they're designed for. Um, the blade profiles um, are not designed for, for being thrown, um, but whereas this axe is. Uh, and again, if I bring this a little bit closer, I'll take the axe mask off, now, hopefully you can see there, um, now this, this axe has been used and abused. There is a little bit of pitting on the blade, which hopefully you can see in the camera there. Uh, there's a little bit of surface rust, which is probably 10 minutes work to get rid of. Um, what I did with this axe, I actually removed the factory finish, which was sort of a black paint. Um, I got rid of all of that. Um, I masked up the, uh, the actual blade of the axe, um, and then I re-blued it with gum blue, just because I think it makes it look slightly nicer. Um, however, the benefit of this axe, um, as opposed to the rest of them, and it, it comes more in line with the smaller mini hatchet here, is that what you can do is you can remove the head. Um, so basically this, I'll put the mask back on, but this is what you've got. Now obviously you can carry this and your handle separately. Um, just gives you a few more options. You can slot this down, maybe down the back of the pack and this can go in a small pocket. Um, but the, the really big benefit of this um, is especially um, if, if you get used to it, you can actually make your own handle for this. 
Um, I've done it a couple of times. It's not um, as good an axe as one of these specially made ones. Um, and I say specially made, but I mean yeah, the, the, it's a factory fitted handle. Um, making your own handle um, is, is a skill in itself. Um, it's something I can do, but I tend to choose not to. Um, but basically you can put this in a pocket, you can put it in, a, in, in your pack, and it takes up very little size or space. Um, and you get to the field and you can, you know, I, I've used a knife. What you can do, I'll show you on here, is you can actually use the blade of the axe itself to carve your handle. Um, now, I have done it once. Um, I have no desire to do it again. Um, it was quite hard work. Uh, very rewarding once, I, once I'd finished doing it, but it was quite hard work. Um, so the, the second time I did it, I actually took my, one of my bushcraft knives, I made the handle with the knife, fitted this on, um, and it worked reasonably well. Um, and once you cut the handle to the correct length, um, and you've got the right weight and consistency, you can actually throw um, with a, a, a makeshift handle on this as well, which was quite useful. Um, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to move the camera a little bit closer in, um, and I'm going to take you through each one of these axes one by one. Um, is, this isn't a, a, a field test or, or a huge review, it's just giving you an idea of um, kind of what these axes can and can't do. Um, so I'll just do a couple of little cut tests with it um, just to show you the, the, what they can do. So what I wanted to do, just very quickly run through um, the similarities uh, and differences of these axes. Uh, and what you'll find is that most axes will do a very similar job. Um, so taking the larger axe first and foremost, um, what you can do, you choke up really close to the head, and by that I mean normally you would hold an axe maybe like this, especially an axe this size. Um, choking up basically means moving your hand as close to the head of the axe as you can. What that allows you to do is, in effect, use it very similar to a knife or a plane, um, and what you can do is you can cut off shaving. If I find a suitable piece of the wood here, you know, I can cut off shavings. If I had a slightly more suitable piece of timber, I, I could basically make a feather stick with this. Um, so in theory, you know, you could carry nothing but an axe and you can do quite a lot of the tasks um, by choking up like this that you would with a knife. Um, the other thing that obviously to use an axe for like this, um, or certainly I do, is carving. Um, and again, this axe will allow me to carve pretty much anything that I can um, or that my skill level allows me to do. So that's the larger axe, and then you might be able to see here, um, so here's my leg, and if I'm in sort of fairly close quarters like this, I can always move my leg back, which is fine, but this handle does kind of move around a little bit, and it can get in your way when you're carving. It's certainly not an insurmountable problem, um, but it can be a little bit irritating at times. Um, so if I move over now to the carving axe, and again, exactly the same thing, I can carve with this, I can create shavings if needs be, I'll find a suitable piece of this timber here. So again, I can make shavings, um, yeah, and this is again a very, very sharp axe, um, and also quite easy to keep sharp, um, but then the main purpose for this particular axe is carving. Unlike the other axes, uh, hopefully you can see the profile, maybe, maybe if I do it this way. Um, so you've got a bit of a convex curve here, uh, and you've actually got a flat side on here. Now these particular carving axes, you can get three different options. You can either have um, a right hand bevel such as this, you can also get a left hand bevel, uh, and you can get a, a symmetrical bevel. Um, I went with the right hand, so I've got the flat section on my left, because uh, I tend to carve right handed. And what I can do is you can smooth down a piece of wood um, to, to, and get it you know, pretty square. Um, obviously not as square as maybe if you were using a, um, a plane or something, but you, you can certainly out in the field you can get relatively square. Also you can come in at an angle and you can carve away and shape away to your heart's content. Um, now, as I say, this, I mean, again, so you can get kind of nice sweeping curves and things like this. Um, and then when you get to that point, you can choke right up 
and you can do a lot of fine detail carving just with the axe. I mean, if, you know, if I was making a spoon, um, I could make one with nothing but this axe. Um, sometimes it's nice to take a knife out because you've got a different kind of grip and you can do a little bit more fine detail. Um, but here, you know, I can do pretty much whatever it is I need to do with just this axe. And then if I just quickly move over to the mini hatchet, and again, as I've said, this is my preferred size of axe. Um, this is what comes out generally um, if I'm out in the woods, um, and it's a really nice, useful size of axe. Um, again, it's exactly the same as the others, it's just as sharp, which hopefully I will uh, show you here. So I can shave off things with this, absolutely no problem. If I flip this over, I might get a slightly better piece of wood. So again, I can quite happily make a feather stick with this if needs be. And again, I can carve with it as well. Um, now if I try and make a nice little flat section here, Hopefully you can see that in comparison to the other one, um, it's not quite as flat um, and that's more to do with my skill level than anything else. Um, but I used this axe for probably three or four years uh, before I bought the carving axe and I did all of my carving with this. Um, it's the right size for me, um, it's, a, it's a fairly lightweight axe head. Um, and it sort of swings and roundabout. Some people prefer an heavier axe head so that you almost just let the axe head drop under its own weight. Um, I prefer to put a little bit more brute force behind it. But again, that is just personal preference. Um, but I would certainly recommend to anybody this size and style of axe um, as, as a very, very good all-rounder. Um, and then our last axe, is the tomahawk. Uh, now I'll be brutally honest, this tomahawk, although it's sharp, um, it's certainly not blunt, it's not as sharp as the others and I, I generally tend not to keep it uh, as sharp because I use it for throwing um, and it will just ruin the edge. Um, the, th the, th the thinner the edge, because of how sharp it is, the easier it is to get damaged when you're throwing it at things, especially if you miss and it hits the ground, maybe clips a couple of stones. Um, but again, in terms of shaving, it doesn't do quite as good a job, and this could easily be sharpened up so that it'll, it'll be comparable to the others. Um, but you can still cut off shavings with this, as you can hopefully see on the camera there. Uh, and you can also certainly still carve with it. And again, hopefully you can see the difference between how this axe carves and how the others do. Now this, this axe isn't designed for carving, uh, it's not particularly designed for bushcrafting per se because it is a, 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 you know, a throwing axe slash tomahawk um, and the, you know, this is, uh, originally these were designed as a jack of all trades, you know, you could cut with it, you could carve with it, um, you've got a little sort of hammerhead um, pole on the end here um, that you can use for various tasks. Um, but again, as a, as a general all-round axe um, and certainly is a much cheaper axe than um, sort of the, these hand forged uh, bushcraft axes. You know, I, I use the Grands Fours, um, you've got makers like Halter Fours um, who are again a little bit cheaper than Grands Fours but very similar in design. Um, or you can look at something like this where you can carve with it, um, you can choke up and use it very similar to a knife um, and as I say the benefit with this is that you can remove this head, you can carry just that round with you, you can use the head as a knife by itself. Um, I have seen a couple of YouTube videos, and I'm yet to try this, where you can lash the head on almost like this, um, with maybe a piece of a block of wood in there to give it a more pronounced angle, and then you can use this essentially as an adze. Um, now it's certainly something I've been meaning to try and just haven't had, uh, had the time or the opportunity to do so but I may well do a video about that at a later date. Right then guys, well I hope that was useful. Um, certainly I hope it's given you something to think about in terms of uh, different types of axes and, and maybe what sort of axe would best suit your needs. Um, certainly from a, from a personal perspective, 
This small mini hatchet um, is absolutely ideal for my purposes. Um, I say I do use the other axes um, and occasionally um, there will be a different type of axe that will suit a certain circumstance for me, uh, which is why I have more than one. Um, but if I, if I was forced to, to pick just one axe to, to own, it would certainly be this one. Um, now, whether or not it was made by this particular maker, or whether I bought uh, a similar size and shape and style axe from somewhere else, um, is, is sort of a bit of a moot point. But um, really, it's not the axe itself uh, or, or the person who made it. It's, it's the size, it's the weight, um, it's the versatility um, of this particular axe. Um, now, again, a lot of people do say to me when I say, you know, if I had to choose, it would be this one. Um, you know, a lot of people don't believe me. A lot of people say, "Oh, yeah, surely a bigger axe is, is, it must be better. It give, give you more options." Um, one thing I did mean to show you, and I'll see if I've got a piece of wood here. Um, in terms of general camp tasks, um, such as uh, splitting um, firewood, um, I actually prefer this axe. And the reason for that is, rather than standing with a longer-handled axe and striking down at a piece of wood, uh, there's no reason why you can't. Um, you know, it's, it's, not, um, it's not a huge issue, but actually for me, what I tend to do is I will use this to batten. Um, so for example, again, I wouldn't necessarily have one of these in the field, I'd just grab a decent sized branch. Um, but you can use this almost like a splitting wedge or a throw, and basically you can process down your firewood um, just as easily with this method, um, and especially if you're taking people um, who are new to bushcraft, new to camping, um, certainly young people as well, rather than giving someone an axe and allowing them to, to try and, uh, and split wood, because obviously there's, there's an element of accuracy and technique involved, um, and there is a, a certain risk to that, you can get them to do exactly what I've done there, and you place this on top of the wood, you strike the axe, rather than using the axe to strike the piece of wood, um, and it's a much safer process. Uh, it's certainly something that I tend to do very often. Um, I, I just prefer it as a method of splitting firewood. Um, but anyway, as I say, guys, I hope it was useful. Um, any questions, comments, um, please leave them in the box below. Um, by all means, feel free to subscribe if you'd like to see more. And I hope to see you all next time. Thanks, guys.